Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the University of Notre Dame. My name is Carter Sneed, and I have the honor of being the director of the De Nicola Center for Ethics and Culture. It is my great pleasure to welcome you this evening. There are 600 people here this evening. It's the biggest Evangelium Vitae medal we've ever had. And we are here tonight to honor the extraordinary work and witness of the Women's Care Center. We are delighted to be joined by so many guests this evening, supporters of the Women Care, Women's Care Center, both locally and across the country who are here with us tonight, have helped make this the largest gathering uh, of our celebration of the Evangelium Vitae Medal uh, to date. We are thrilled to welcome you to Our Ladies University. For those of you who might not be familiar with the work of the De Nicola Center, allow me a brief word about what we do. The De Nicola Center for Ethics and Culture is committed to sharing the richness of the Catholic moral and intellectual tradition both here at Notre Dame and in the broader public square through our programs dedicated to academic research, student formation, and building a culture of life. The De Nicola Center is the leading engine on campus for the university's institutional commitment to defending the dignity of every human life. Just this past year, the De Nicola Center supported 1,000 students, faculty, and staff from Notre Dame, St. Mary's, and Holy Cross College who attended the March for Life in Washington, D.C., serving as a loving witness to the dignity of all human life. In addition to hosting our annual on-campus Vita Institute, which is our elite week-long intellectual formation programs for leaders of the pro-life movement worldwide. The De Nicola Center also hosted a one-day Vita Institute in the Diocese of Galveston, Houston at the invitation of Cardinal Daniel DiNardo. Along with our annual fall conference and the wonderful new publications in our book series with Notre Dame Press, perhaps the most exciting thing this year has been the growth of our center's Soren Fellows Formation Program which offers Notre Dame students who are interested in deepening their understanding of the Catholic moral and intellectual tradition the opportunity to integrate their social, intellectual, and spiritual values through a variety of offerings on campus, including regular reading groups, lectures, masses, dinners, and funding to support research, service, and internship opportunities. We've been amazed at the rapid growth of this program, uh, which currently boasts almost 300 fellows to date. We're delighted that so many of them were able to join us this evening. Please, Soren Fellows, wherever you are, stand up and raise your hands. <laughs> All right. Now, none of this, of course, would have been possible without the support of our center's friends and benefactors, many of whom are here with us this evening. You may have heard that our center uh, recently underwent a name change. Thanks to a transformative gift from the De Nicola family, we are proud to be known today as the De Nicola Center for Ethics and Culture. Our dear friends Tony and Christy De Nicola, uh, along with their family and friends, were able to join us at Notre Dame this weekend, a day early, so that we could celebrate the dedication of the De Nicola Center with them, and we are honored and humbled to have their partnership, their support, and their family's name. We were also delighted to be joined by Cardinal Timothy Dolan and Notre Dame's uh, President Father John Jenkins at the dedication of the De Nicola Center this morning. While their duties prevented them from being able to join us this evening, we were honored to celebrate this great occasion with them and we know that their prayers are with us this evening. Finally, I'd like to recognize just a few others here with us tonight. Of course, we are thrilled to be joined by our local ordinary, Bishop Kevin Rhodes, a longtime friend and supporter of both the Women's Care Center and the De Nicola Center. Also, we're here to welcome this evening members of the leadership of the university, as well as trustees of the university here at Notre Dame, including our own Dean of the College of Arts and Letters, Sarah Mastillo, Dean of the College of Business, Martin Kremers, Father Jerry Orlinger, the Vice President for uh, Church Relations and Mission Engagement, Father David Tyson, the President of Holy Cross College, and uh, Trustee Dick Nussbaum.
we would like to recognize the members of the DeNicola Center for Ethics and Culture Executive Advisory Committee and their families, as well as our Faculty Advisory Committee. Please stand and recognize both advisory committees. <laughs> members of... We're very pleased to welcome leaders of the national pro-life movement here this evening, including Notre Dame's first Evangelium Vitae medal recipient, uh, Richard Durflinger, as well as Congressman Dan Lipinski. <laughs> I'd like to recognize the Notre Dame faculty, staff, our Holy Cross priests and brothers and seminarians, and all the members of the Notre Dame family here this evening. Finally, I would like to recognize and welcome Professor David Solomon, the founding director of the Center for Ethics and Culture, and Bill Dodderwike, who along with his wife Peggy, have been generous supporters of the Evangelium Vitae Medal, were the original inspiration and visionaries for the Evangelium Vitae Medal, and the DeNicola Center from the very beginning. I'd also like to personally welcome the special guests of the Women's Care Center, particularly their president, Ann Mannion, foundation director, Bobby Williams, Women's Care Center founder, Professor Janet Smith, who founded the, the Women's Care Center in 1984. the current and past employees of the Women's Care Center who carry on their work so brilliantly today. I'd like to note that four women who brought up the gifts during Mass this evening are all past or present Notre Dame students and Soren Fellows who currently work for the Women's Care Center here in South Bend. We are so proud of them. We are so proud of them and their important work. They embody the friendship and unity between Our Lady's University and the Women's Care Center, and we are so grateful for their service. There are so many other people in this room that I could thank. Each one of you has been a wonderful partner of the DeNicola Center and the Women's Care Center. We are so thankful for your presence and support, but I can't conclude without recognizing the DeNicola Center's amazing staff who make the incredible work of the center possible through their efforts every day. As I've said to you before, I apologize in advance because this staff will ruin every other staff for you. They are simply the best staff that has ever been assembled in the history of human staffs. <laughs> and they are Laura Gonziorek, Associate Director for Operations. <laughs> Ken Hellenius, our communication specialist. And, and podcast guru. Pete Labsey, the student program manager at Extraordinaire. <laughs> Margaret Cabanis, our research and publications program manager. <laughs> Tracy Westlake, our administrative assistant who's been at the center since its inception in 1999. Brendan Besh, our law and policy intern. Our chaplain, Father Terry Ehrman. Woo! And above all, tonight's MVP of the Evangelium Vitae Medal in every culture of life endeavor that we undertake at the center, Petra Farrell, our culture of life program manager who has made this entire evening possible. We will continue with tonight's program following dinner, but for now, I would like to welcome our bishop, Kevin Rhodes, to the podium to offer the blessing over our meal, after which you can enjoy your dinner, and then you'll hear from me shortly thereafter. Bishop Rhodes. Carter just thanks so many people, but I want to say I am so grateful for the leadership of Professor Carter Sneed of our 
Center for Ethics and Culture. Thank you, Carter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, O God, source of life, fill our hearts with the joys of Easter. We give thanks for the new life your Son, our risen Lord, has won for us, and we celebrate his victory over sin and death. We ask you to bless the Women's Care Center and the De Nicola Center for Ethics and Culture and their service of the gospel of life. We give thanks for the food that we receive this evening, which nourishes and strengthens our bodies. We ask that you also nourish and strengthen our souls in faith and love. Bless this food and bless our evening together. Grant that in the spirit of genuine love for one another, we may always remain one in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It is time, friends, to get to the business of this evening, which is to the award the 2019 Evangelium Vitae Medal. So, in his great encyclical, Evangelium Vitae, Pope St. John Paul II calls upon those who would proclaim the gospel of life to cultivate an attitude of wonder that celebrates the gratuitous gift of every human life. Even in the face of suffering and hardship, the Pope, the great St. Pope John Paul II wrote, we are challenged to find meaning and precisely in these circumstances to be open to perceiving the, in the face of every person a call to encounter, dialogue, and solidarity. The Women's Care Center has built a model of service rooted in John Paul the Great's vision of radical hospitality, welcoming women precisely in their moment of greatest vulnerability and deepest need. Theirs is a ministry of love based not on the proposition of an argument, but on an encounter with the unique and unrepeatable individual before them. 35 years ago, the Women's Care Center began its work not far from this very campus. In fact, it was a Notre Dame professor who first opened the doors of the little blue house next to an abortion clinic, offering women with unexpected pregnancies true choices, love instead of condemnation, hope instead of fear, life instead of death. By walking with these women through difficulty and uncertainty, the Women's Care Center, founded by Janet Smith, sitting with us this evening, models true reverence and love for every person and the life of every person. John Paul recognized that, quote, these heroic women do not always find support in the world around them. Society would tell women facing unplanned pregnancies that the highest good is absolute freedom. Freedom from ties of responsibility and relationship, freedom from dependency and brokenness, freedom from limits to our desires, ultimately freedom from the child in their wombs. The Women's Care Center recognizes the lie at the heart of this false freedom. They see how this shallow conception of choice and empowerment reveals instead, of, instead a profound poverty of imagination, an inability to recognize our brothers and sisters in the womb and to acknowledge the unbreakable bonds uniting all members of the human family. They see clearly that society's demand for freedom has led to the impoverishment of women, broken families, and untold destruction of human life. Instead, the Women's Care Center offers a vision of life where the bonds of love between mother and child are seen as sustaining and life-affirming. The woman who walks through their doors is given unconditional love and support, helping her recognize her own dignity and worth, and inspiring in her the courage to make difficult but life-changing choices rooted in a sincere gift of self. This unconditional love is joined with concrete action. 
knowing that it is not enough to tell our brothers and sisters in need to go in peace, be warm and filled, the Women's Care Center steps in to offer support in the forms of counseling, parenting classes, referrals for mother and baby care, car seats, diapers, and the tangible goods necessary to launch them successfully in a community of love. By truly accompanying new mothers and fathers, the Women's Care Center helps families in difficulty discover new hope and find assistance and support in overcoming hardship and the fear of accepting a newly conceived life or life which has just come into the world. The result of this love and support is nothing short of transformational, not simply for the mother and her child, but for the communities where the Women's Care Center opens its doors. Now, with 32 centers in 11 states, more than 100,000 women each year can experience the same unconditional love, that the same dedicated care, and see it blossom in their own lives and the lives of their children. The Women's Care Center is truly building a society of love and life, one encounter at a time. And so it is fitting that at this great university, dedicated to Our Lady, who is the mother of life, we should celebrate their contributions to building a culture of life where every member of the human family is welcomed and embraced. And we are thus honored to bestow on the Women's Care Center the 2019 University of Notre Dame Evangelium Vitae Medal. You're going to put it on her, yeah? Yeah. Wow, thank you. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Carter. Um, and many thanks to all the faculty and staff of the Denicola Center for Ethics and Culture for this amazing honor. Women's Care Center is humbled and grateful to be the recipient of this year's Evangelium Vitae Award. Um, when you think about it, in the history of the Women's Care Center, the wonderful story that, that we've been privileged to be part of, it just seems to make sense that we're here. After, after all, we've been, the Women's Care Center has been intertwined with the University of Notre Dame, you know, and was founded on this campus 35 years ago. We have literally grown up in the shadow of the Golden Dome of Our Lady. We were founded by a Notre Dame professor, Dr. Janet Smith, um, and since inception, students... <laughs> And since inception, students of this university and St. Mary's have volunteered at our centers, and some have come back to us after graduation to become full-time counselors, like a young architecture student, Jenny Hunsberger, who fell in love with this mission and never became an architect, <laughs> and heads up our client care today. Um, Notre Dame clergy, the Holy Cross priests, have served our mission faithfully with their advocacy and with their prayers. Our boards of directors have numerous Notre Dame grads serving our mission, not only locally, but, but at centers nationwide. We, are, we have flourished with the support of the Notre Dame family, and for this we are truly blessed. As I look around this room tonight, I, I see the faces of so many people that mean so much to our mission. People from South Bend who have been partners for a long time, including my own family. Thank you for being here. <laughs> and people across many states as this mission has expanded. And some of you have come from very long distances. We are so grateful that you are here today to celebrate with us 
uh, people like Janet, who came, who opened the first women's care center in a tiny blue house back in 1984. Back in 84, I was a young CPA with Price Waterhouse. My younger sister, Mary Hammond, recruited me to join the first board of directors. For those of you who might remember Mary, she could be very persuasive. It was simple. The board needed an accountant, and I was it. <laughs> sitting around a small living room during board meetings, some of us sitting on green plastic turtles that they had for the kids back then, <laughs> I don't think any of us could have foreseen how this ministry would grow. But even in our early history, the fundamentals were right. The sole focus was on how to best love and serve the next woman who walks through our door, and this hasn't changed. This means outstanding counselors, nurses, sonographers, and parenting instructors. It is and has always been about the personal connection. And this is why in every community with a women's care center, abortions plummet. 92% of the women that we serve across the country choose life for their babies. And late last year, we surpassed one million visits to Women's Care Center. That means one million times a young woman has walked through our doors. One million times she has been loved and served. The true lifesavers and heroes of this organization are, and have always been, the counselors. which is why I am so glad that so many of you were able to join us today. Um, this award gives us the validation and the courage to continue to grow this mission on a national level, but it always starts with one. One woman at a time and one baby at a time. And one person, like many of you in this room, who have given so much over the years to make this mission possible. We are so grateful to be celebrating with you. I would also like to acknowledge someone else who always affirms others, but without which, without who, I guess, <laughs> we wouldn't have 32 centers in 11 states. And that person is Bobby Williams. It was Bobby, along with his amazing board of the foundation, that sparked the national growth of this ministry. Bobby? Anne wanted to know if I want to wear the medal. <laughs> Looks better on you, believe me. Well, thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. To echo Andrew Marks, we are truly blessed to be here this evening. The Women's Care Center has flourished throughout the years, and we are thankful to be in position to love and serve so many brave young moms and their precious unborn babies. Now, Anne shared just some of our life-saving statistics, but if you'd allow me, I'd like to share a couple more. Maybe the fact that every other baby born in this community starts at the Women's Care Center. Maybe the fact that we now see well over 450 women a day nationwide. And my favorite statistic, the fact, the wonderful blessed fact that in the last 12 months, over 16,000 babies were saved from abortion at Women's Care Center. <laughs> Now, these stats are amazing, and I don't think anyone, uh, Janet and anyone, could have seen this coming so many years ago. Now, when I travel around the country sharing our story, probably the question I hear the most is, just how did this happen? How did this little pregnancy resource center from South Bend, Indiana, become, as our late bishop and dear friend, the most Reverend John Michael Darcy once said, the most life-saving pro-life organization in United States history? Well, it's simple. We are who we are by the ever-present, loving, and bountiful grace of God, and his blessings and grace have rained down on us since inception. It was God's grace that gave Janet Smith the courage she needed to garner enough support to purchase the little blue house next door to the neighborhood abortionist so many years ago. 
It was God's grace that sent us our founding board of directors and first benefactors, many of whom are in this room this evening. It was God's grace that gave us the unwavering support of two of the most incredible shepherds our diocese has ever seen. As previously mentioned, Bishop Darcy loved the care center, advocating for us every chance he could, even so much as joining our Fort Wayne Women's Care Center board the month before he passed. Now, when we lost Bishop Darcy, we were understandably concerned because he meant the world to us. Well, by the same grace of God, he sent us another incredible friend and advocate in Bishop Kevin Rhodes, who serves on our governing board of directors and has been so strong and unwavering in his support of our life-saving mission of hope. Bishop Kevin is a gift to the Diocese of Fort Wayne, and he is a gift to the Women's Care Center. Can we please thank our dear bishop again? <laughs> It was God's grace that has sent us so many amazing people, such great leaders, community leaders, who have served and continue to serve on our various boards of directors. I see our incredible foundation chairman, Mike Leap, in the audience this evening. It is beloved community leaders like Mike and so many others who've helped us to become what we are today. Mike, can you raise your hand and be recognized? It is God's grace that has sent us so many wonderful women to faithfully serve as our counselors and ultrasound nurses. These women give their whole hearts to every client they see. It is through them that this highly results-driven professional model of care is administered in a way to tens of thousands of women each year. It was and is God's loving grace that the Care Center has all of you. You, our friends, our benefactors, our partners in this life-saving mission of hope. By God's grace, you come. You give us the resources we need to love and serve each family that walks through our doors. In 35 years, thanks to all of you, we've never turned a family away, and we never will. And for the final, and dare I say most important piece of the puzzle, one of the greatest gifts, one of the greatest of all God's graces that he's bestowed upon us was the gift of Ann Mannion. Anne has spent the last three decades of her life serving as our volunteer president. I guarantee you no one works harder or gives more of herself to this ministry than Anne. She has spent literally a lifetime faithfully serving the sons and daughters of all of our friends and neighbors. Please join me in once again thanking Anne Mannion. <clears throat> So ladies and gentlemen, the final question is, where do we go from here? What's next for the Women's Care Center? I mean, after receiving an award like this, do we just pack up and ride off into the sunset? Hardly, because you know, we're just getting started. The women keep coming and we will be there for them with open arms and gentle hearts. Now, we are living in what is becoming increasingly difficult and challenging times. I say difficult and challenging as we all see the news. You've seen the incredible sadness regarding the life issue coming out of New York, Virginia, Illinois, and sadly close to a dozen other states who are presently in the active legislative process of legalizing abortion on demand at any time for any reason up to and after the moment of birth. It's nothing like we've ever seen. It's a little scary and it's a little sad. But the good news is at the Women's Care Center, we choose not to focus on the sad, but rather we focus on the joy of motherhood. At the center, we stay out of politics, but rather we focus on caring for our neighbor. At the center, we do not look to the darkness, but rather we look to the light. We strive to be the light. And just what is the light? The light is the hearts of the brave young women who walk through our doors. The light is our counselors, our nurses, our parenting class instructors, our staff, who have chosen to sacrifice much to serve hundreds of courageous women and their babies each and every day. And the light, my friends, is you. You are the light. 
by your love, by your prayers, by your advocacy, and yes, by your financial support, you bring God's light to every woman and baby touched at the Women's Care Center tens of thousands of times a year. Now, with all the distressing news in the last few months, a lot of people have been approaching us, troubled by the, see, by the trends they see both nationally and even here locally. And they've come to us asking Anne and myself a very simple question. What can I do? Many of you this evening actually have approached me and said, you know, what can we do? How can we turn the tide? Not only across the country, but in our own hometown. Well, my friends, it's simple. Double down on what works. Double down on what is proven, what is results-driven, and what is administered in a way that's beyond reproach. Double down on the unconditionally loving, non-judgmental, life-saving women's care center. Really what I'm saying is, ladies and gentlemen, I'm asking you to double down on love. You want to turn the tide? You want to make a real life-saving difference? Then recommit to our mission. Pray harder for us each day than you ever have before. Advocate for us. Translation, talk us up to your rich relatives. <laughs> but more than you ever have before. And yes, please, continue to support us personally, but like you never have before. We thank everyone for coming this evening. We thank our great friends at the De Nicola Center of Ethics and Culture for this great honor and for their incredibly vital role that they share with us to do, as St. Pope John Paul II once said, building a culture of life. Ladies and gentlemen, we need you. We love you. Some of you have been here since 1984. Some are newer. All are precious and matter. I ask you to please continue to be our light because through your light, illuminated by the grace of God, the world's going to look a little brighter for all of us. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you so much, Bobby and Anne. You're just extraordinary people, and it's so inspiring in this moment when it's easy to get down and just to, to be around folks like Anne Mannion, the president of the Women's Care Center, and Bobby Williams, the director of their foundation. It's just inspiring. And I have to tell you, this is, this is my favorite night of the year. This is my, as a member of the Notre Dame family, it's my favorite night of the year where Notre Dame, University of Notre Dame, the Blessed Mother's University, with all of its prestige and power and influence and global reach, chooses and takes unto itself the uh, opportunity to honor those who care for the very least among us, for those who need the most help, the smallest and the weakest and the most vulnerable. God bless the Women's Care Center. Let's thank them one more time. And we will conclude this evening with our wonderful friend, Father Jerry Olinger, Vice President at Notre Dame for Mission Engagement and Church Affairs, who will lead us in our closing benediction. Just like to uh, add a note of thanks and gratitude, really, on behalf of Father John Jenkins and the university community for the work of the Women's Care Center. When I was in the seminary, I had a chance to uh, be a volunteer for the Women's Care Center, so I saw firsthand the great work both in the lives of mothers, but also in our community. So thank you for what you do. Will you all please bow your heads and join me in prayer. God, our creator, we give thanks to you who alone have the power to impart the breath of life as you form each of us in our mother's womb. As we celebrate the Evangelium Vitae Award this evening, we give thanks for the ministry and witness of all who work at the Women's Care Center. We give thanks as well for all those who are involved in efforts in supporting a culture of life, for all those who support, support pregnant mothers and their children, as well as the protection of life at every stage. Grant, we pray, that we whom you have made stewards of creation through the intercession of our Blessed Mother may remain faithful to the sacred trust 
and constant in safeguarding the dignity of every human life. In your goodness, you have given us food to eat. Grant also that we may continue to live that new life, which the risen Lord has won for us and graciously bestowed on us. For he lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Father Jerry. Thank you all for your commitment to a culture of life. Thank you for coming out this evening. God bless all of you, and we'll see you soon at the De Nicola Center for Ethics and Culture. Good night.